Sebastian. I had not seen Sebastian for eight years. I had heard he was living alone in some remote old house and rarely visited his former friends. So when I received the letter from him and his invitation to visit, my curiosity would not allow me to refuse. The letter looked like it had been written very quickly. The handwriting wandered all over the page, and I was not sure of certain words. Even Sebastian's grammar had changed since I last saw him, and I doubt even a poet could have made sense of his writing. The last line appeared to say, Finally stumbled on the secret. Saturday will have wings. Come see the changing. I arrived Friday night. Sebastian was much thinner and far paler. I barely recognized him. He seemed to be nervous, but he greeted me warmly. He spoke without stopping. I cannot remember much of what he said. It was so desperate and obsessive. He mentioned old books, symbols, spells, various drugs, and years of harsh study. At last he said, I now know the secret. Tomorrow you will watch me as I say the last words of the spell, and then I will change. You will see me standing before you with great white wings, perfect wings. Then I will see if I can fly. What I must say now still makes me tremble. The next day Sebastian stood facing the window. I watched and listened to him greedily shout the spell's final words. There was a violent burst of what seemed like black lightning, and I saw before me Sebastian with great white perfect wings. He stretched them like a great eagle, then wrapped them slowly around the front of his body, laughing like a drunken madman. I could not speak, but Sebastian did, saying, and now to fly. He lunged towards the window to open the latch, but he stumbled and struck his head on the window. And that's when we discovered that Sebastian had no arms. And that's where I left him, trying to open the window with his mouth.